Following up on our last video on Microsoft Word, this week's video focuses on Microsoft Excel, particularly tips for printing spreadsheets. This training and other Excel help materials use the terms cells, rows, and columns. A cell is a single box where a value is entered. Rows are the horizontal groups of cells with the numbered row headings down the left side. Columns are the vertical groups of cells with alphabetical column headings along the top. Clicking in the headings will select an entire row or column. In the file menu, page setup has a few options that may help you in printing. Under the Page tab, you can select between Portrait and Landscape Orientation, whether it prints the long way or wide way on the paper. You can scale the spreadsheet between 10% and 400% of its original size, or you can force the sheet to fit within a certain number of pages. You may want to set the sheet to be only one page wide by 99 pages tall so that you have all the columns on each page, even if the rows go on for many pages. The page setup also has a tab for the header and footer. Like Word, these repeat on each page, but in Excel you edit from this window. The drop-down menus let you select common headers and footers, or you can use the button to customize your header and footer. The customizing window lets you edit the left, right, and center sections of the header or footer with buttons to add page number, date, or file name fields, or you can type other text. Again, the page numbers are crucial for longer documents, and the header or footer is the best place for them. This may also be a good place to note draft or confidential as long as you remember to remove those when appropriate. If a cell has a long string of data or text, it will either overflow its cell, appear truncated, or display as a series of pound signs. To make everything display correctly, you can either adjust the column widths or turn on text wrapping. It's easy to resize columns by clicking and dragging the boundary between two columns within the column header. The cursor changes to a double arrow when it's over the correct spot. Double-clicking this spot will automatically set the width of the column to the left, making the column just wide enough to fit the longest cell. It's also possible to have text wrapped to the next line while staying in the same column. The row becomes taller to make room for the extra line. To turn on text wrapping, select the cells you want, then go to the Format menu and select Cells. The Format Cells window pops up. Click the Alignment tab and check the box marked Wrap Text. Like Word, Excel uses page breaks that can be forced into particular positions. Some sections may need to appear on a single page, so it is important to make sure there aren't any breaks in the middle of those sections. Whenever you go to File, Print, even if you cancel printing, Excel will determine the page breaks and display them on the sheet as dashed lines. Wide spreadsheets will have vertical page breaks as well as horizontal. You can also add page breaks manually. Select a row below where you want the break. Go to Insert and select Page Break. To get a vertical break, select a column to the right of where you want the break. It's possible to get both breaks at the same time by selecting a cell below and to the right of where you want the breaks. To get a break that is only horizontal, make sure you're selecting the entire row by clicking in the row heading. Adjusting page breaks depends on your version of Excel. With Excel 2008, you can simply drag a break while in standard view, but in older versions you have to go to View and select Page Break Preview before you can manipulate the breaks. When you move a break, Excel automatically adjusts the other breaks. Drag a break too far and a new break will appear because the area won't fit on a single page. With a large spreadsheet, you may want to print just a selection. First, select which part you want to print. You can select entire rows or columns by clicking on the headings, which are the gray sections on the top and left. Once you have your selection, you can go to File, Print. In the section marked Print What, click on the circle next to Selection. In Excel 2008, the Quick Preview will change immediately. In older versions, you can click the Print Preview button to see how your selection will print. Just like in Word, the print window has a button marked PDF that gives you an option, Save as PDF, that will create a PDF version of your spreadsheet or selection. Consider using PDFs as a way to test your print settings. Before you send 30 pages to the printer, create a PDF version and flip through it to make sure everything displays correctly. If a spreadsheet gives you perfect PDFs but prints incorrectly, there's likely a problem with your printer settings, so please contact IT to fix it. That's it for this week, but we're not done with Excel yet. Next week we'll cover how to freeze and hide rows and panes.